I, Martha Karambu Kome, Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya and President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, do swear in the name of the Almighty God to diligently serve the people and the Republic of Kenya and to impartially do justice in accordance with this Constitution as by law established and the laws and customs of the Republic without any fear, favor, bias, affection, ill will, prejudice, or any political, religious, or other influence. In the exercise of the judicial functions entrusted to me, I will at all times and to the best of my knowledge and ability protect, administer, and defend this Constitution with a view to upholding the dignity and the respect for the judiciary and the judicial system of Kenya and promoting fairness, independence, competence, and integrity within it. So help me God. Chief Justice uh, Martha Kome, or should I add Lady Justice Martha Kome there, and she steps into the office today, the very first day she takes over from uh, the DCJ, who has been acting CJ since January 12th, and today is the day that um, she begins to deliver on the promises, as well as uh, what she has gone ahead to say in the oath of office. And I want to begin with you, Gladys Boss, as we look at these many challenges uh, that the judiciary faces, whether you're talking about um, financing, uh, having their budget um, applications reduced to manageable levels, quote unquote, mm -hmm. Um, the question of uh, 41 judges, which we'll be getting to shortly. What do you think CJ Koome must do differently from her predecessors uh, to make it a reality, what she just said in that oath? Yeah, I think, um, I think one of the things that uh, Martha Koome is known for is being very practical with the dispensation of justice. She's always been very keen to clear cases as quickly as possible and in the simplest, uh, easiest manner. We've seen that when she has gone, when she had gone out of others, to, uh, gone to various stations. That has really been her, 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 her key strength. So we do hope, because at the moment we have, the biggest challenge we have is the, the, the period with which uh, disposal of cases take. It's a big challenge. It's very easy for people to the case has been taken 20 years, other cases have taken 10 years. Uh, you hear somebody said at the High Court, my case took 10 years, now it's at the Court of Appeal, it will take another 10 years. That really is the biggest problem Kenyans have. And if we can just break that, it is very easy. And uh, hopefully she's going to use her practical strength, because some of the issues are very simple. Mm -hmm. We should be telling ourselves, we shouldn't allow people to, to be questioning a witness for 10 hours, you know? When yet the person already wrote a witness statement. The person should just be coming to the to the doc, confirming that that is their witness statement. After all, the witness statement has been already served on all other parties. And then they can just be cross-examined on the finer points where people don't agree on the witness statement. That is the, is you, the so the small practical issues. We also have the challenges of courtroom space. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you hear a matter can't be heard because the judge is ready, but has to wait in chambers because there isn't a courtroom space. And those are some of the, when I was there, I remember the issue was to try and make sure that every judge <coughs> has a courtroom, so that it's always available they can. And that can be done by practical examples. We don't even have to wait for the judiciary to build the courtrooms. We can let the private sector build those courtrooms. Just give them an undertaking that you will rent the building, so mm -hmm. they can custom build it for them. That way, with the judiciary is focusing on on the judicial issues, not on construction. They are not in the real estate business, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just wondering, when you say that she has to ensure that uh, people do not spend so much time uh, taking witness statements in court because they have already been uh, written down, mm -hmm. what power does she have no, if the, a magistrate the, or a oh, judge? There is guidelines. The chief justice can make uh, gazette rules, actually. 
they are allowed under the Civil Procedure Act to gazette rules for easier uh, administration and disposal of cases. So she has that power. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in fact, if you see uh, uh, in the past, uh, in fact, what has may improved the judicial system is actually the rules gazetted by the Chief Justice. So she has the power to do that. Mm -hmm. She also is the chairperson of the National Council for Administration of Justice, where the prosecu prosecution, DPP is there, uh, the the, a few cabinet ministers are there, they've got uh, people from the prison service and so on. So during those, the, as chairperson of the National Council for Administration of Justice, she can be able to come up with guidelines or at least propose mm -hmm. guidelines that can make easier dispensation of mm -hmm. Okay. It's a dispensation of justice, yes. All right, I will get back to that. But first, let's listen to a promise she made when she appeared for the interviews with the Judicial Service Commission, as well as when she appeared for approval hearings at the National Assembly's JLAC team. I will pick up a phone and fix an appointment with the appointing authority. And we find out where the problem is, resolve it, and get the judges in office. When the CJ is seen with the president, they are discussing matters on administration of justice, that everybody is responsible. It's not a beauty contest who serves Kenya better, it's in the executive, the judiciary. We are all in it. And so now, yeah. Dan Stanomari, she promised on the 14th of uh, April 2021, before the Judicial Service Commission panelists, that she'll pick her phone, call the president, to talk about the 40 judges' tell I say 40 because one of them died. Is it that time? Because now she's in office. It's time yeah, to just deliver. comment on that one. I, I'll give her an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Dunstan. She, was, she, she said that to impress the panelists, <laughs> to give her the job. <laughs> she has the job. The reality is totally different. The president, she talks of her picking her phone and calling, has his own political interests <coughs> that the judiciary needs to assist him. She has sworn to, I've seen her take an oath to defend the law and to defend justice based on the Constitution. The executive will want that Constitution a bit tilted to their favor. So the question is, is she going to stand as, as Mutunga stood? Is she going to stand as Maraga did? Then if she stands better than those two, then she'll get problems with the executive, definitely. So she's not going to get what she's telling us. The question of appointment of judges, 41, 40 judges, is a landmine, is a dynamite. The president has said these people have issues. Then you are telling him now, pick a phone, tell him to appoint. The question is, will those issues have been resolved? So, <laughs> to, be, to be fair to her, she says that she'll pick her phone, book an appointment, then have a conversation with the president. What are the issues? I, I, I did pick that line of question. When the deputy CJ asked her, mm -hmm. what guarantee do you have that your phone will be picked? <laughs> that, is, that was an interview. It was, uh, it was making the panelists <laughs> think that she's the only person who can solve that thing. That thing is deep-rooted. The questions that we are having on why the 41 judges are not being appointed is to the advantage of the executive. The more cases clog in courts, the more the executive is happy. Why? Or else why, what gain are they having? There must be a certain intrinsic gain for non-appointment of those judges. For example, you've seen we have only 13 judges in, in the, the Court of, of Appeal. Appeal. With, with age and with those guys going up, definitely the executive might be praying that by attrition of time, we find that there is no court called the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. It is to their advantage. The executive is never friendly with the judiciary. What advantage? They know better. I've never been part of that executive. But I've said but there so can never be any reason... There can never be any reason. One, the economy of this country is collapsing because the commercial courts are not deciding cases. The economy of this country, properties of dead people in, in, the, in succession, children and, and wives and spouses are not getting 
inherited uh, title deeds because they are clogged at the succession courts. The questions of murder suspects, people are languishing 10 years before their decisions are done. But when you see is a question about election petitions within six months, they must be concluded. So we expect the Chief Justice, if, and I'm sure she's listening to us today, if she's going to take the pro people approach, let there be judges for the citizens and remove judges in divisions that deal with the executive. You'll see them react. Because there is no way we are having to, and this is not the first time, sir. There's a time again when uh, Mutunga appointed some judges. Mm -hmm. It took one year and two months before they were appointed. So how is she going to deal with it? To me, okay. I am thinking that she will either carry a pen and resign because executives have no feelings. Let's listen to what the president told Lady Justice Martha Kome and um, the Supreme Court Judge William Oko on Friday. And I will at all times, and to the best of my knowledge and ability, protect, administer, defend this constitution with a view of upholding the dignity and the respect for the judiciary and the judicial system of Kenya and promoting fairness, independence, competence, and integrity within it. Mine is only to wish you God's blessings. As you embark on your duties, we will pray for you. We know you will succeed. We are there to partner with you and to work with you as uh, the executive branch of the government. We want to partner with you. We want to work together with you. And we pray for your success. Justice Ouko, both of you, at least, we may talk from grassroots in the system. William Kwamket, what do you think? What do you make of that statement? Fanya haki tu. Very, very haki interesting that thing. the president uh, had to recite the, the, the oath. oath. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think um, from my where, where I sit, uh, uh, first, first things first, we, we have to go back to the judgment from the high court about uh, uh, BBI. But hold uh, on, uh, William, uh, I've, I've uh, just asked you about... Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, that, a, there's, the there's, there's a new <laughs> chief justice in this country who has just come to office. Yes. She's taking office today. Yes. There's a president who is uh, speaking to them and asking them to do haki. Mm. But there are pending <laughs> issues, including the appointment of 40 judges yes. and questions about financing, which yes. are part of the challenges that the There are pending issues, faces. including also the constitution of the Court of Appeal judges to hear the BBI appeal, okay? And, uh, and why it was a mistake in the first place to have that bench that had the, the, uh, um, the petitions. The Joel Ngugi bench. Yes, because some of the judges there were, 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 um, they were clearly conflicted. How so? Because they were part of the 40. Some of them were part but of the... But at the time they were so being appointed, they had, they had, they had, they we have actually own, spoken about this earlier on issues. this show. But the question is, yes. they were serving judges of the High Court. And the Chief Justice then decided that these five will constitute the bench. What's yeah. wrong with that? Yeah, because they, they were conflicted. You see, uh, and Gladys is here. She's a, she's a victim of, 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 of judicial uh, 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 dictatorship. She, she's a, a living testimony of judicial dictatorship they hounded her out of I office don't know what that when, is. yes she, they hounded her out of office when she was right so you know judges are human beings so like uh, like the president you know the president was uh, he was careful in mm -hmm. what he was saying that he he to that he, 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 he read through the the oath the oath and told the chief justice mungo you know you know <laughs> uh, sharia 
ni kama msumeno inakata mbele na nyuma unaona so um, I, I want I, I, I do not know uh, uh, chief justice mother come personally but i think she's a she's a, she's a good judge she's she's <coughs> rose, she's risen up the ranks um, she deserves what she where, where she is now but uh, in terms of like uh, omari said earlier there is the difference between um, <laughs> theory <laughs> and interview <laughs> and, and and reality so the, one of the things she has to do now is to be very clear in in, in uh, as she 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 appoints the, the the bench to hear the the bbi petition the bbi appeal because because let me tell you because let me tell you she just took an oath there, there is no way uh -huh. there is no way that five judges can overturn the will of the people i mean that 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 is there are some things you do yes we we are now, we now, are a, Sam, we, we are a country we, yes, we, we are a country I, I, I of, of, of law and order it, but look, we must not we must into not topic. use the court to overturn the you're going into a topic, topic that you are not people. yet at but i want to refer you to the oath that she took there and she says that she sought to defend the dignity and respect for judiciary and the judicial system and so my specific question has been what must she do because of the circumstances that we live in for her to achieve what that oath talks about one of the weaknesses of that oath one of the one of the weakness I, I noticed from one of the weaknesses from that oath is uh is swearing not to be influenced by politics because you know uh, you cannot you cannot that, that's whoever wrote that oath uh, never thought through <laughs> because you you know, w there is something called interdependence. But do they say fear there of favor something, includes covers There is something that. called interdependence, okay, between all, all, all the arms of government. So when you say you, 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 will not, uh, you swear not to be influenced by politics, well, it's an oath, yes, but uh, when, it, when you take office, you, you, must, you must always be aware of Would you want to a chief justice who is influenced by politics? Uh, why not? Thank you. Why not? Politics yeah. is, is wh uh, what is politics? I'm going to clarify this. Yeah, I, 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 think, really I, think, uh, <laughs> I think I think really that, that ushers in my thinking mm -hmm. that uh, th there are two things that uh, uh, our new chief justice, whom I congratulate, especially being a lady uh, as much, and I, I, and I really wish her well. But there are two things that she must do. Number one, she must maintain the independence of the judiciary. And uh, right, uh, Honorable Kamket here, uh, raises the issue of interdependence, but remember there's inter interdependence, there is dependence, and there's also <laughs> the independence. One must strive to ensure that the judiciary is uh, completely independent in terms of how they carry out their duty uh, in executing justice and fairness <coughs> to Kenyans. Of course, the issues of interdependence will come when it comes to the issues of administration. Yeah. You require resources, yes. which must be given from yes. the executive and the administrator and through the parliament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, uh, that should not uh, cripple your ability uh, to have independent thinking in terms of uh, how you execute justice to Kenyans. You know, wh when this ruling was made, uh, mm -hmm. the ruling on uh, uh, the BBI, uh, there are a number of things that made me a bit worried. When, and, and, and once again I say this uh, as, as an analyst who is not on either side, uh, something got me worried. When I heard some of the politicians saying, well, you have had your day. Now we are also having our own chief justice and we are going to have our day. I was very worried about yeah. that. Because I asked myself questions. Are you trying to tell us as very senior political uh, players in this country that uh, you want to bring in a chief justice who is going to carry a baggage, and that would be a very serious undoing for the new chief justice if that were to happen. And I would advise her uh, to ensure that, yes, if anyone in any way influenced or helped you to get into that position, that, again, as we who put it that? here, I'm, I'm saying, I'm just, no, just who advising. Said who he, said that we have our own chief justice? No, I, I saw it uh, a lot from the politicians, the politicians who subscribe to, to the, the, the BBI site. Yes, yes, yes. It was there in a lot of uh, social media yes. groups, and uh, a lot of it is also <coughs> written down. Yeah, so I, I, you know, uh, Speaker Kagoshi, on this show we attribute whatever is said to the people who said it. I don't know yeah. if you have a specific name of who said that. 
Or you just want to remain general? No, I, I will leave that to Omari. I'll Omari will, uh, Omari will, will put the names on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want Bobos wants to come in on this. But <coughs> yeah. I'll, I'll still give it a, a chance, but yeah. let's listen to what she said about um, the roles that the different terms of government will play as she steps into the office this morning. The executive has a duty to ensure budgetary allocations that supports the functions of the judiciary to ensure that we get the support necessary for the court orders to be obeyed and implemented, that the investigations and prosecution of cases are undertaken efficiently. The registration has the mandate to make law and oversight other branches, including in approve nominations, like they did of mine. The judiciary's law is to adjudicate conflicts based on the Constitution and the law to promote peace and prosperity. To resolve conflict, however, doesn't mean that all parties are satisfied, and our constitutional democracy requires that those who are dissatisfied with the legal rulings and judgments pursue the matter through judicial process and legal channels. As we continue... Right, and Lady Justice Martha Kome appears very clear that mm -hmm. um, the executive has to follow court orders and ensure that investigations are done properly mm -hmm. uh, for expeditious handling of matters. And she's coming to office at a time there are several court orders on mm -hmm. especially the um, appointment of 40 judges that have not been followed. Mm -hmm. How does she resolve all this alongside what Honorable Kamket says here that she has to be politically aware? Yes, no, no. I think, first of all, uh, she has a big challenge because we have a challenge, uh, like on the issue of the 41 judges, for example. What the president did is illegal because he has no power. He's supposed to carry and undertake the ceremonial duty He's of appointing the judges and swearing them in. But he really doesn't have a choice of, of, um, of appointing them the way it used to happen during the old constitution where the president could announce on the lunchtime news that so-and-so has been appointed as a judge. The law has changed. The power lies with the Judicial Service Commission. And if the, any of the judges have issues as has been raised by State House, then there is a, a, a normal way of doing it. Just please uh, uh, file a petition before the Judicial Service Commission. If the Judicial F F Service Commission finds that there is a prima facie case against any of the judges, then they will ask the president to appoint a tribunal, and then they shall be interrogated and removed from office. That is the correct procedure. Mm -hmm. But the president cannot just say, I'm not appointing them. <clears throat> I think the president has since realized that he has, he has gone wrong on this one, and that he has disobeyed the law. But his ego now is at play. Because it means he'll have to swallow his pride and accept that he disobeyed the law. I think that's where the challenge is. So it's how to deal with the president's ego at the moment. Because anybody can tell him that w refusal to appoint the judges is wrong. And this is not the first time that the head of state has been castigated by the courts. He was found to have contravened the constitution in 2016. He was found, he contravened the constitution in appointing, uh, f taking functions from Nairobi, uh, county mm -hmm. he in the appointment of his cabinet he has uh, and and so even when he recited uh, justice come as uh, oath of office he had the same oath of office and he doesn't follow it because the law says you must follow the constitution and even even in something as basic as the issue of bbi it was obviously unconstitutional to use state resources for what you're calling a popular initiative so he, so, he, so has, how he is guilty of contravening the Constitution so many times that I don't think he even knows the meaning of it. Wow. So what does CJ Kome do? Because I think she said she'll call. She'll yes, call. I, think, I think CJ Kome probably stands a better chance. If you remember, the, 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 the Justice Maraga differed with the president openly over the issue of the appointment of the judges. And in fact, um, I think... Uh, Justice Baraga said it publicly. It could have wounded the president's ego. So I think Justice Kome has a better chance because she hasn't had any altercation with the president. She can probably persuade him. Mm -hmm. But even as people are saying that those, uh, those judges have integrity issues, those judges are still hearing cases. You know, they are not, they are, some are magistrates, others are judges in the high court, are supposed to go to the court of appeal. Right. So if they really have integrity issues, then why are we still keeping them okay. as the high court judges? Why not start the petition? And remember... The DPP is on record of having gone to petition against the Deputy Chief Justice in, before the JSC. So if they think there is any integrity issue with the current 41 judges, then 
please file a petition. The correct thing is file a petition before the Judicial Service Commission. So it's, it's obvious that uh, they, they have their own other reasons. All right. And in Kenyans should know what is happening to Kenya. Today, we have, I think it's only 10 judges of the Court of Appeal. Uh, no uh, cases I I are being had at the Court of I Appeal. I think it's at a count all. of 15 minus the two now, it's about 13. It's 13. 13. Yeah. Yes, okay. So that, is that the correct number? I don't I practice it. Yes, uh, but uh, in any case. Others, uh, one mm. is in uh, the Mombasa. Jiria Training College. Mm -hmm. The other one is in the East African uh, Co Court, Co of Co Justice. Court of Justice. So they are around, actually 10. around 10 or 9. They are 10. Mm -hmm. Those that are able to attend court. Some if I only add. I, I, I will. I will then, because but I but just, just for that, I think it's important for Kenyans to know what is happening. No cases are being had at the Court of Appeal. I think they're only hearing the Section 5-2 yes, applications on only. Stay. That's only that's yeah. They're just doing stays. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine how many what is Kenyans the reason? are is it, suffering? Is it that they require... Um, Sizable benches or what? No, normally, normally you need to have three, I mean three. for a full case it's a three, mm -hmm. three person bench. But because there's many preliminary applications, you find that the preliminary uh, applications or interim applications are had first before the substantive application. Mm -hmm. So when I tell you they're only hearing section 5-2, applications that is all they are hearing they are not hearing any substantive case so okay. kenyans are suffering and i think it's extremely irresponsible right. for the president to put kenyans through that kind of suffering i know people who monies are locked because they can't unlock the monies because the courts are, uh, the cases are, mm. are, are not proceeding so it has very serious implications on even on our on our on the economy of this country. All right. And then I, I, many I people don't progress. want to invest in Kenya Parabobos, because of the I same challenge. I want us challenge. to make progress by listening to what uh, the members of parliament said on the day that um, the name of uh, CJ Kome was approved for appointment. On matters of style, swim with the current. On matters of principle, stand like a rock, like Justice Odunga, Justice Joel. Justice Madeka, Justice uh, Chacha Mwita, and Justice Nga. And this house must respect the judiciary. I want to speak to Lady Justice Mother Kome and ask her to jealously guard the independence of the judiciary. She must protect the judicial officers, Honorable Speaker, from the intimidation we have seen from the likes of Raphael Tuju of the Jubilee Party, threatening judicial officers that they may uh, lose their security, Honorable Speaker, if they take certain decisions. And I hope that uh, Lady Justice Mother Komi will take it as part of continuing the reform that was started by Justice Mutunga, the reforms by Justice Maraga, are now consolidated for the common good, so that it's not people just trying to get even, uh, revisiting one another, but now looking at the Kenyan people and where the judiciary should be. All right, these are some of the leaders that spoke about that. It may appear to have taken such a political angle to how that approval hearing was handled at Parliament. One may wonder, what did the others say here? They are, including Tom Kajuang, who is the vice chairperson of the JLAC team. We can see a situation where we are getting into what is called judicial capture or what is called judicial activism. And are all under the ages of independence of judiciary. Many people are saying, oh, don't criticize those judges. Don't say things about those judges. Why not? The independence is not absolute. It's supposed to be controlled within that judiciary. It is actually a tragedy that in this age and time, we are still talking of first woman this and first woman that. That is something that we should have left almost 30 years ago. And I'm hoping, Mr. Speaker, that we will not then hound the deputy out of the office because she's a woman. Uh, because we know, if you look at this country, there are very many men holding men multiple positions. Nobody has hounded them out because they are men. Let us have a lady justice, chief justice, and a deputy lady justice, who is another woman. Let us not hound the other woman out of office. Right, and Speaker Kagoshia, yeah. so <laughs> she, uh, Martha Kome appeared alongside, I believe it was 10 others, before the Judicial Service Commission. She was about to convince the panelists. He says that, uh, they say that for the sake of uh, passing the interview, goes to the next level of approval hearings at <coughs> Parliament. Now she is the Chief Justice. But now all these questions of politics, don't you think then that the politicians are the problem in this country? <coughs> no, but we have politics in every field, even in judiciary itself. 
we have politics. So we have politics across uh, the board. And uh, for her to manage the position of uh, CJ, she must also be a very good politician. It's important. And, and I think uh, sometimes that is what Maraga maybe was lacking in, whereby you also need to have a proper and a good relationship between uh, the body or the, the, the side of government that you're heading with the other. So we have a judiciary that need to relate very well with the executive. As much as they uh, take their position mm -hmm. and uh, stand on their ground, they still need to relate well. And that really was my other point, that uh, uh, Justice Kome will need to ensure that uh, she works out a relationship that is not toxic between the judiciary and the executive and the legislature. And this is important also because she will need finances to run judiciary. Mm -hmm. And uh, as uh, uh, she's running judiciary again, she needs to embrace the issue of ICT, the technology. Uh, and, and I'm happy about what COVID has done to us, that uh, with COVID now, we're able to listen to cases uh, online. We don't have to really go to even the courtroom to listen to the cases. Uh, so the issue of the courtroom now, the, the physical building doesn't need to matter anymore as we move forward. In fact, what I think need to be done is what uh, Honorable Sholei has said, that we need to have uh, uh, um, CJ coming up with uh, circulars and rules, the CJ mm -hmm. rules that are going to guide judiciary into but, but it faster appears, expeditions. It appears whatever she does, the politicians yeah. are going to read it differently, like they just did in no, Not really. That, that, that would, shouldn't matter. That shouldn't matter. Let the politicians do their job. Like now you mm -hmm. have heard uh, honorable member saying that uh, in Kenya we are still talking of uh, uh, first lady in this, first lady in that. I mean, that is happening all over the world. We are talking about the first lady vice president in the USA. We don't even have a first president in USA. So our time will come also, maybe in the next 50 years, when we'll have a first lady president, or maybe even in the next 10 years. So really, that shouldn't matter. Let the politicians do their, their job. Let the politicians talk. Uh -huh. You have had, for example, uh, honorable uh, member, uh, my friend here, and a former speaker of uh, Baringo, uh, say, say those judges are tanga tanga judges. Uh, but, but remember, Justice Odunga is one of the justices uh, uh, who have been affiliated and uh, in the past have been um, uh, connected too much to uh, the NASA side. But here you have now uh, justice, uh, five, five judges who are coming together and they make a decision mm -hmm. and then you see people labeling them because they are politicians. Okay. And, and politicians will label when it doesn't uh, you know, favor them and when it favors them, they will applaud. And the same judges tomorrow will make a different judgment or, or a different thing that will appease uh, my honorable member here. And he will be happy about it. All so right. let the politicians do their job. But as a, as, a, as a CJ, remain focused on the independence of judiciary. But at the same time, don't lose sight. Don't lose sight of uh, uh, good relations uh, between uh, the judiciary, the executive, and uh, also uh, the legislature. And I know there is a proposal already. And I think she did uh, put it that uh, we should have an intergovernment or an inter... Uh, inter-arms. Inter-arms. There is already that, the National Council for Administration of Justice. Yes, it is established already, yes. It is established. No, she, she was saying that there needs to be a legislation to guide that process so that if there are conflicts, they can be resolved. But there is a law. There's a law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it needs to, it, it need to be action. It needs to be uh, made practical so that when we have issues, then they can be resolved. But again, you see also, uh, and I like the question which uh, the Deputy S uh, Chief Justice asked her, what guarantee do you yeah. have that your phone will be picked? <laughs> mm -hmm. that, I mean, even the politicians also will also need to have um, cooperation. They need to cooperate also with the judiciary. Okay. And they also need to, to mean what they say. Okay, the president says clearly that uh, tender haki. So we also need to interrogate haki according to who? Are you getting? Because if uh, the five judges, for it's, example... Isn't justice justice? <laughs> should it, you know? should it just be justice? <laughs> yeah, you know. But justice, you know, when you lose a case, I have a friend of mine who uh, had someone who lost a case after uh, two decades. Mm. And, and, and now you want to tell them that that is justice? Are you getting? Okay. Yeah, so okay, but I think, but I think we, it is important that we clarify want, this for Kenyans. This, yes. no, let me just help that on this one because I think it's important for Kenyans to understand this. Oh. When a judgment is made, just because it, the orders are against you or it doesn't favor your side, doesn't mean that the judges are compromised or are tanga tanga judges. In fact, I've not had a single person who has objected to the judgment go and object on a basis of law. I want somebody to tell me the basic structure doctrine is not applicable in Kenya. 
then argue how it's not applicable. Tell me that uh, what are the what is the the characteristics of a popular initiative, you know? And then show me how mm -hmm. the initiative was in fact popular. So okay. nobody has given me arguments. Mm -hmm. Nobody like Cam Kett is just saying those that judgment is bad. But I want you to speak to each of the twenty three uh, declarations uh, and tell me where we'll, we'll exactly get to that. that's coming in court. I, I, know, I know that you're provoking him. <laughs> that's coming, in, that's no, coming in court. All right, we'll get to that. We don't have to say next, some things we say as politicians. Just hold on, just hold on, honorable Cam Kett, because we need to tie this. Um, Dustin Omari, all these political interests. He says that let the politicians do the politics. But unfortunately, the politicians are in, in the House of Legislation, they're also in the executive, and there are things they can do that make a tell how far the judiciary can go. So how do you tame that, and how much can CJ Kome do to get the confidence of those two arms of government? Two answers. I have seen Honorable Duale, a new Duale, a different Duale, when he was a majority leader, demanded Justice Odunga to be brought to Parliament for questioning because he was giving <laughs> decisions, pro raila decisions. <laughs> Today, one of the decisions Justice Odunga did is to stop the presiding officers of 27, 2017 elections. Returning officers. Which was removed and vacated alone at night with the current Chief Justice, Mother Kome. A bench of what, three. Uh, what? We are only seeing now one. The others, really nobody cares because none of them have risen to be the Chief Justice. Then you ask yourself, today Dwale is praising that judgment of the court. That Odunga he wanted brought in, in Parliament, he's a hero. That is the nature of politics. Number two, Justice Mother Kome put very well, I don't, I don't know, that is on record, internet never forgets. She will pick her phone and talk to the appointing authority. Court orders worldwide, you don't negotiate. Once a court order has been issued, if the orders have been issued for the president to appoint judges, then there must be seduction and negotiation. What about when that court order is issued against the citizen TV? Who will you go to talk to? Who will Wanjiku negotiate with? We can't have two parallel ways of applying court orders. It is either a court order that must be complied with, but, or- But, but, but Dastan Omari, she is the head of the judiciary. She's not acting as the president of the Supreme Court. There can never be a discussion about court orders. The moment we are opening this country to discussions about court orders, I'm telling you citizens, I also going to ask Sisi Wakati order in Akuja Nyumbangu Bomolewe. Do I go to negotiate? I must comply. That, so the question the Chief you. Justice is coming up with is a double standard. That, that's she what I'm either you. That's enforces the law or she has no as I told you, the reality is going to down on her. She'll be the fastest person to resign. Because politicians never follow the law. But just no matter, the question I'm asking you, she's the head of the judiciary. Yes. She's the chairperson, sorry, the chairperson of the Judicial Service Commission. Yes. So in her capacity, can't she do that? She can discuss about administrative issues, not about compliance of court orders. The, more, the chief justice has two positions. One, as an independent chief justice, who is the president of the court, of the Supreme Court. That independence does not share with anybody. But as the head of judiciary, they can discuss about building of uh, houses, they can talk about the welfare of the staff, they can talk about budget allocation. That's what they can negotiate. But on a question of a judge who has given a court order, whether that judge is in Garissa, that order must be complied. If it is not complied, the only known available avenues is to appeal, go for stay, Vary that order, proceedings. that is the law. Okay. And that is why in judiciary, we have four, la four layers for decision making. A magistrate, a high court judge, a court of appeal, and Supreme, Supreme Court. court. Uh, Mother, Com Mother Karua has added one more layer, the East African Court of Justice. You can still go there. But the question of negotiating whether the president is going to agree 
That is a new jurisprudence that has never been done anywhere. Isn't that interesting that you say that Martha Karu has added another layer? She's coming to the show tomorrow. No, no, Taylor. <laughs> she has added another court. Because we only knew from the Supreme Court is the ICC. But now we have, we can go to Arusha. Okay. And still our matters can be discussed. I want us to transition to the next topic because we need to wind up on the show. And this is uh, what uh, Honorable Kamket has wanted to talk about uh, for so long. And that is to do with the <laughs> appeals so <laughs> against the VBI judgment that was delivered on, I believe it was on uh, 13th. <laughs> Of, um, of May 2021, and uh, we've seen that the IABC has filed its um, uh, affidavits as well as uh, the notice of appeal indicating that they are dissatisfied with the requirement that uh, there should have been independent or uh, there should have been voter registration ac across the country uh, for the referendum to be held, that also the judges were wrong on the quorum of the IABC because is it Article 250 of the Constitution requires that a commission can be constituted by a minimum of three and a maximum of nine? And Honorable Kamket, what is the progress when it comes to your side of politics in pursuing uh, these uh, um, appeals? And are you seeing any chance of success bearing in mind the reality that we see in the judiciary at the moment? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, th that, that, um, that, that, that judgment was wrong. And, and w it, w it must be defeated by all means necessary. Um, How wrong was it? So How yes, wrong was it? it? Will be, we will show that in court. But I'm saying that judgment. <laughs> I was mean, wrong. you just said it was wrong. <laughs> yes. Give the reasons. Yes, yeah, we'll, we'll give the reasons in court. Number, num, number Honorable two. Honorable boss might say it was right. She'll give her reasons. What are your reasons? She will give the wrong. reasons in court. Just wait. Be, be patient. That judgment was wrong. It must be fought. It must be defeated. Uh, you cannot tell us that um, you cannot change the constitution. Mm -hmm. the, con the constitution belongs to the people. Mm -hmm. Then it belongs to the court. It belongs to the people. And uh, that judgment must and should be overturned. It, it is, the it reasons was, they gave is that uh, this process of BBI it was, it, was not it, a popular it, it initiative. Matter. I'm just telling you that judgment should and must be of, overturned. How will it? You, That's just wait, 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 wait for the wait for the arguments in court. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just making a political statement. Oh. You understand? I'm making a political statement as a politician. The, the details will be, will be made in court by the lawyers. The, the, by the lawyers in court. Okay. Number two. The, 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 and that, te te what was we were talking about earlier, the, the politics of, of, of the court, mm -hmm. the, 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 the judges themselves were conflicted. Num that's number one. And, it's, uh, and I do not want to blame the Attorney General at this point, but um, <laughs> there are some issues that should have been avoided from the beginning. Um, avoided by who? By, by, by in terms of appointing the bench that to hear those matters. They, they are, there are issues that should have been, the, I mean, but, but even but those judges themselves should have recused themselves from, from listening to those. But how do they recuse themselves if the respondents don't move such a motion? Well, I'm just saying, uh, I'm, say, uh, so I'm, I'm, being, I'm being fair to the Attorney General at this point, but some, some, something should have, should have not been done. But anyway, we are, we, it is what it is now, but I'm saying as, as a matter of fact and as a matter of uh, principle, that judgment should and must be overturned okay. by all means necessary. I don't know what necessary I means. Thought it was, I thought it was in accordance to the law. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Speaker Kagushi. That's you, what you I like. You, you have heard me. I, I think, uh, all right, uh, I've heard you. Speaker yes. Kagushi, I, I, chances I, I, of success in these appeals? No, what, what I would want to say mm -hmm. first is that uh, I want to fault my friend here uh, that uh, if indeed these judges ought not to have listened to this case, uh, Honorable Kamket, you had the opportunity all along to, make the to have identified the, the, the weaknesses in terms of the confl uh, con 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 conflict of interest that existed. And you ought to have taken some step, either you or uh, uh, any other person uh, who was interested in the outcome of that case. Uh, having said that, anyway, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, f for, for me, uh, the outcome of this case to me would be uh, a fresh uh, breath of life in our country where we have been much more receiving one side. Uh, you know, since the time the opposition was kind of swallowed by the government, mm -hmm. 
uh, we have not had that other alternative voice. Mm -hmm. And I have personally been having a lot of problems with the LSK, which has been on Harvey's case. Because I think and I believe that as a country, we need that other voice. We need that, uh, that, that other uh, control mm -hmm. so that we don't have one system that goes and can't be stopped. Okay. And, and, and so when we have judges who have a different opinion, uh, I think it's a good thing. And, 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 and to me, we need to allow that as part of democracy to thrive. And I'm very happy that the president himself mm -hmm. have not spoken about it and have not condemned the judges. I, I, I know a lot of other politicians have done that, but I'm very happy that the president seemed to have uh, um, uh, respected mm -hmm. uh, that perspective. And for that, I honor him. Mm -hmm. and, and I think as a country, we need that so that we can be able to move forward. We need to know that as a speaker, I cannot exercise all the uh, authority that I have as a speaker without caring mm -hmm. that there's someone else who says, no, speaker, you can go beyond this point. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why we have systems which have controls. So the, the, here the, in this case, we have five judges who came up with a, with a, with a different opinion from what uh, we seem to think. And they have put their, 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 their points but, on the but, table. But if you, if you are to be specific, Speaker Kagusha, yeah. do you believe uh, that IBC requires to have conducted a vote registration before going to, before preparing for a referendum? And secondly, b because the IBC application, they are talking about if you stop us from, uh, if you give us a permanent injunction from doing anything towards this referendum, you're also stopping us from preparing for Vote registration. Well, I, I can talk about two things which are on record mm -hmm. on this show with you. That I said at one point, I was not very clear on the issue of uh, popular initiative. I, I was not very sure that uh, the government should hijack what is uh, uh, meant for the common mwananchi and use it mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as, a, as a government machinery. And I have said on this show before that uh, we ought to have used the parliamentary initiative as a government, if we wanted to change the constitution, but not the popular initiative. The popular initiative really should be left to the Wananchi when they feel helpless in the hands of a government that doesn't comply with what they think. Then the, 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 the Wananchi can come on board and uh, together sign a million signatures and force the government okay. to change the constitution. Now, that is one. The, the, the other issue, which I have again talked about in this show earlier on, well, when BBI was starting, was the issue of uh, the ombudsman, the judiciary ob ombudsman. Again, mm -hmm. I have been very, very uncomfortable with uh, a police being appointed by the, by the executive to mm -hmm. go and police the mm -hmm. judiciary mm -hmm. right in their, in their house. Right. I have, been, I have thought and have said earlier that uh, ombudsman should be appointed from within judiciary to mm -hmm. handle the complaints of Wananchi within that system. But once right. it comes from the executive, automatically it cripples the independence mm -hmm. but, but, but of, Speaker of, uh, Kagushia, the of judiciary. The five judges did not s necessarily speak about the content of the Constitutional Amendment of 2020, so we may not get to that, but uh, you'll have the final say, Honorable Boss, but uh, Dan Stonomari, uh, so IBC and the other uh, appellants, uh, for instance, IBC saying that judges, you are wrong on quorum, you are wrong on vote registration, your view? Uh, there are two issues. Justice Okwanyi, gave the IBC a clean bill of health that mm -hmm. they can run their affairs with three commissioners. Five judge bench has said they must be five. Is this any of these court orders superior than another? No. All of them are high court orders. Whether one has five judge bench or one has one. Until the Court of Appeal pronounces itself or mm -hmm. the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. for now the IBC can proceed with their work. Two, on the question of voter registration, I have seen they want to appeal that they are being injected from doing voter registration. There is no voter registration specific to a referendum. Mm -hmm. 2022, voter registration is ongoing. The IBC Act, there is no single day the IBC is supposed to stop voter registration. It is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they cannot be saying that we were doing a specific voter registration for a specific function. So they can still continue doing their job, but so long as it is not targeted or pegged on the voter 
on, 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 on the referendum. Mm -hmm. Three, when you look at the judges of the Supreme, of the court, of the High Court, they only dealt with the procedures. How was BBI formulated and executed? Mm -hmm. They never dealt with the content, and that's why you've told the uh, 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 speaker properly that it can never happen worldwide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have seen it. An ombudsman, when, mother, when J Lady Justice, Chief Justice was being interviewed, she said there is nothing wrong even now under the JC Act. There is a provision for appointment of an ombudsman. And there is, as we are sitting now, the DCJ is the official ombudsman of the judiciary. So there is no vacuum. The only position is that the executive wants to bring, and you know the president has an appetite of appointing military guys. So he can bring another <laughs> body, put him there as the ombudsman. And that is, and uh, that's uh, what we are saying. Why would because say if that? the executive has power to appoint an ombudsman, you cannot limit who they will appoint. Is it likely to be the death knell at the Court of Appeal? Which judge of the Court of Appeal, which judge of the Supreme Court is going to accept a general from the army or a police officer or somebody from outside who reports directly to State House to be inside? Therefore, the question, is it a possibility that the judges made this decision based on their feelings and views about the BBA document itself? Be, they, let, me, let me answer <laughs> this. The law as it is, the constitution as it is, the judiciary is a very independent entity. <laughs> An independent entity as they were taught by Fred Ngatia when, she, when he was being interviewed for the chief justice position. Everybody was listening for free. You cannot bring the executive inside the judiciary. The Neither can you get judiciary mm. the, 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 to be part of the executive. Okay, all right. Let, let, me, let me shift the question to Honorable Boss because you need to wind up. Is it a possibility that the judges had in mind the content of the Constitutional Amendment 2020 Obvious. as they were making a decision on the process yeah. of amending the Constitution? No. Obvious. No, 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 that is not true at all because one <laughs> has to just look at the actual judgment. If you look at the judgment, the, there were 23 issues that were that were you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> know, you know Gladys. No, no, you Gladys. need a political no, 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 Allow me. Allow, allow her, to, her to, talk. to give her response. I, I, I will allow, allow her, no, no, but I just wanted no, no, to no, just no, say. No, no, wait. Don't bully her. Just, just make <laughs> it happen. So I was saying, remember, these issues were brought before the court. The 23 issues for determination were brought before the court by petitioners from outside. So these were questions before the court. The court has deliberately gone to each of the 23 issues and answered them. Answered and has answered them, not using their feelings, but laws that they have cited and scholarly writings that have de 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 dealt with that issue of law. So the, 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 there is no feeling of the judges. I think that's a simple way you tell Wanaichi so that you can sway the public. But anybody who understands the science of law knows that if you want to know if judges were biased, just read the judgment. Ask yourself, on this issue, did they cite an existing law? Yes. Did they cite existing precedents? Do, they, do the precedents match what they, their arguments are? If the answer is yes, that's not about feelings, it's about the law. Okay. All so right. it, it, is so, it is so obvious to read. Yes. And if, uh, as Kamkete is saying, that these judgments must be defeated, those are just uh, political uh, chest thumping. Eh? Okay. But... The way, you must, the way it should be answered. I can understand there are some questions, like the issue of quorum. I think that is appealable. I think uh, the issue of uh, just um, to help the president, did he breach chapter six, you can appeal on that one so that the court can go slow on him on that one. Because that one, did, they, they can argue that he didn't, that mm -hmm. he was acting in good faith and he was acting within the law. So there are a few points within mm -hmm. Uh, there that are appealable. But right. I can guarantee you something. You may appeal and succeed in three points and, but, lose and, and lose the others. And, right. and those others are so substantial that it is impossible to change. Okay. All, all right. Honorable Kamket, you said that uh, Gladys Boss is the wrong person to ask the question. <laughs> you I know, you're giving them too much time I, I, to talk I, I, and I'm not getting a I chance. I presume you're the right person. What is your answer? <laughs> well, you see, I was, <laughs> you know, I was saying Gladys is, is, is the wrong person to, to ask such a question because, you know, Gladys has been opposed to BBI from, from, the, from the word go. But the things so, I so said she, are the she, same she, things okay. the judges she, she, said. So... so um, let me just say this. There, there are, you saw, 
when you say that you cannot amend the constitution, what are you telling us? Don't you're telling don't us say you that cannot uh, amend the constitution. No, no, that, that's, what, that's, that's, that's exactly what those judges no, are saying. That's what right. Because said. we have had, uh, you, listen, the He's override, the, the, there is um, overriding public interest. And, All right. and, and you must be sensitive as a judge, mm -hmm. uh, even, even if, uh, if, uh, however strict you are in terms of the law, okay. you, must look, you must look at the overriding public interest. The judges interest. did not say the, the, that you so cannot so amend so the constitution. No, no, that, that's, that's they that's said that you can amend it, but in this that's manner. manner. Boss, that is what they said I in want us to wind up After on this. Let me cut you short, allow me uh, with respect, that um, IBC, Attorney General, BBS Secretariat, and Raila Odinga have given their notices of uh, appeal, and that matter will be coming up in court when the time comes. I want us to take a look at the feedback that you've been sharing with us via Citizen TV. Uh, this is Kiprono. You're saying that tell Kamket, if BBA was a popular initiative, then Omutata would have been the first to appeal, not the president. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> but sure, I think Chief Justice Martha Kome will disappoint President Kenyatta knowing that he has less than 14 months in office. The president threatened the judiciary again, but with Mwilu, William, and Isaac Lanola, we should not have favors in justice. Jacob Abere, CJ Martha Kome, stay at Apex Court, is going to be determined by how she's going to handle BBI appeal case, appointment stalemate of 40 judges, and lastly, how she's going to breathe fire towards executive on most cases that executive bypasses. Whoa. Primarily, Kenyan politics is structured around tribal mobilization, and like others, Jebi Muturi had to go back to his backyard to seek blessings. It might not amount to much in terms of political clout, but it can be wished away in Gemma's 2022 matrix. That is Leparillo. Okelo Molimu, you say, if coronation, <laughs> why corona really? <laughs> it's coronation season. JB Muturi's one uh, just marked the beginning. Next would be Waiguru, then Kinjuri, then Munya, then Oiria then Moses Kuria, then every clan elder. <laughs> okay, you know, Richie, you said that when the right time comes, a spokesperson will emerge. It just happened. A spokesperson is interpointed by some men or somewhere in caves by, whoa. Okay. <laughs> That's your take. And thank you so much for watching the show and uh, taking part, sending your views. Honorable Kamketa, Santisana Kwakuja. Um, John Kagusha from Neri.